Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. We're your hosts, Jeremiah and Rafina Antonetti. Hey, um, here it comes. You know why we are here. <laughs> <You're so silly. laughs> to talk straight about the Bible. Mm, you know what? The more I talk about the straight, the more I study. You know that you're crooked? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, as a matter of fact, we were speaking a few days ago, and, you know, I talked about with my wife about conviction. Conviction. Do we live by conviction? Yes. You better believe it. Yes, yes, yes. If the scriptures don't convict you, you ain't getting it. I ain't getting it. We mm. need to be convicted mm. in order to be restricted. Mm. When I say conviction now in that that's sense good. is that that's good. I have to be convicted by the word of God to be restricted of the way of sin. Mm. Now, we all, like I said, please, and I will always say this, we all have our sins, our perversities. We all get tempted every mm -hmm. day. We all fall every day, whether we yeah. say one thing or we think a thought. We all have our fallings. There's not a day I, I don't think that a person does not fall or slip. You know why? It just proves that God is right. Mm. Let every man be a liar, mm. but God be true. Well, I'm going to read the verse of scripture that we've been studying real quick, and I'm going to pass this over to my beautiful wife, who's just energized by the Spirit of God to give you the word. And it tells us this, mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 7. Now then, my sons, is that plural? Yes. Listen to me, do not depart, nor forget the words of my mouth. Let your way in life be far from her, and do not go near the door of her house. Mm. Avoid even being near the place of temptation. Oh, man. Or you will give your honor to others. Or you will give your honor to others. And your years to the cruel one. Yeah, how about that? Yes, and what does it mean to give your honor to others? Mm. It means to lack or lose honor or reputation. Are we hearing that? Mm. Our reputation. You know, Proverbs 22, 1 says, A good name, a good name is more desirable mm. than great riches, and favor is better than silver and gold. A good name. Mm. <laughs> or reputation is to be more desired than great wealth. Do you know my prayer, a lot of my prayer, and my cry to God concerning my life, I say, God, I don't know how long I'm going to live, but I beg you, please, please let me have a good name mm. at my death. Because a good name, Solomon said, is better than the finest perfumes. Mm -hmm. Better than the finest perfumes wow. he says for even a little fly in in the perfume destroys the, the entire the ointment entire thing. That's right. if someone if, if if you go to sell a beautiful and very expensive bottle of perfume with the greatest name and someone sees a fly in it they'll go no thank you mm -hmm. and you know we all have our faults but let me tell you something only god can shield your life in him. You know, that, that reminds me of um, what the word says about um, a little yeast. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Spoils the whole batch. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Just a little. We don't need a lot. We don't need a lot mm -hmm. to destroy our reputation. Oh, we God don't. help us, please. We don't need a lot. That's why we have to be so careful how we walk. And the real value of a person is not what he possesses, mm. but what he is. Wow. One gets a good name by his kind dealings with others. Okay, good. See, good. Hmm. All right? Because 
that definitely has to be connected with the Holy Spirit some kind of way. Even people that don't that don't um, believe in God, all right, if they're doing good, right? <laughs> if they're doing good, that has to be connected with something that God has placed within them to do good. What Genesis? Oh, you're pointing to something. Genesis. If you do well, shall you not be accepted? <laughs> I have that on my notes here, and she's speaking. I just pointed to it. So she just said that. If you do good, aren't you going to be accepted? Mm -hmm. But if you do, if you do not, if you do not do well, sin is lying at your doorstep, like we talked about yesterday. Mm -hmm. And unto you shall be his desire, and you shall but you shall rule over him. Mm. So think about that. So so the state of one who has lost his honor mm. brings shame upon him. Mm. That's what happens. But you know what? We always think we always think oh it's only it's only me so what, you know. No, it trickles. The whole body. It trickles. Not, it trickles to your family. Mm. It trickles. It trickles down to from generation to generation to generation. Look at the Bible. Wow. Okay, those that have done wrong, those that God has had to destroy because it trickles. And he knows, and he knew that they would not serve him, so he had to destroy families, generations, because wow. they would rise up wow. to be against him and his people. It trickles. Ooh. A bad reputation goes a long way. And that's and why so, wisdom has to be first. And so, and so what happens when we lose our, our honor? Mm -hmm. And shame does set in and, and affects everybody around us. We have lost time and effort we have wasted our lives God have mercy. think about some of the things that we are doing even right now and i point i point to myself as well me too okay because i have a lot of stuff that i'm sitting around doing that doesn't have anything to do with god wasted time that's why solomon describes it as meaningless he says it's meaningless how many, we talked about this the other day. How many years did Solomon live? He only lived 62 years, correct? Ac according to what I understand, uh, he was 22 when he, you know, received the honor of sitting on the throne. Mm -hmm. And he only reigned 40 years, the Bible 40 says. Years. So you take that, it would say 62. A young man dying mm -hmm. because God said, you know what? I've given you the word mm -hmm. at 22 mm -hmm. and I've tested your life. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. But he wasted time. A lot of time. He wasted effort. He built houses for his girlfriends that dishonored God. And I think about that. That's, building. And, and that's right. what I have here. He wasted his life. Worshiping other gods. Wow. And even if he personally never bent his knees. He built it. He still sinned against God. Because he allowed it in his home. Oh, my Lord. He allowed it in his kingdom. When we worship other gods, we are prostituting ourselves and we are committing adultery and idolatry. You know, you just said that. And I have here Psalm 73, which you and I have taught in the past. Because Asaph... At the beginning of this whole thing, he says this. Truly, Elohim is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Mm. Oh, man. Mm. That's the worst thing we can do when we look at the world and we watch this. We move toward the gate and we don't go in right away. We look and we say, wow, look at all they have. Wow, mm. they must be godly. Let me tell you something. Mm. One time, mm. one time, mm. this, is the, this is true. This is true. 
Yeah. One time, uh, well, a pastor told me, you know, uh, you need to put on a suit, you know, a tie, you know, and, 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 you know, you need to look like a minister. And I said, oh, I see. So all those rich people that have these suits that cost $3,000, $4,000, you know, they're suits like that. They must be very godly, right? Hmm. Oh, folks, don't be fooled by the Cadillacs and the Rolls Royces and the best houses and the best clothes. This is not the sign of godliness. Right. That's why we still have people. Just the other day, I'm looking on Facebook. I'm not on all the other time, but I scroll and I see a minister and, and, and a woman there. I'm, I'm not going to mention no names, but behind them, this is the season, the harvest of your harvest. I'm saying, when are we going to stop mm -hmm. this? Your when are we going to? Right? What mm -hmm. is the problem with us? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to share something with you that is very powerful and very simple, and it works. Isaiah said, if you are obedient, you will eat the fruit of the land. Listen, if you are obedient, God will give you stuff. Amen. <laughs> he will give you stuff. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Well, you see. Somebody told me that today. Hey, somebody <laughs> told me Somebody told me that today. I have it on my desktop. <laughs> so I should know better. We have to start our day with Jesus and the scriptures. We have to start with him in everything that we do. So his foot almost slipped. And look what he says. At the very end of Psalm 73, Asaph came to the, re to the realization that he was wrong. And you know when he found out he was wrong? Is when he looked and he walked into the sanctuary of God. He says, wait a minute. All these people that I'm looking at who are at the gate of prostitution and who are prostituting themselves to get everything that they can. He says, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was like a wild beast before you because they're going to be destroyed. Mm. And then he says, for lo, they are far from you. And because they're far from you, they shall perish. And you destroy all them that go a whoring from you. Wow. This is what the scripture says. Wow. Psalm 73, verse 27. Now, let me give you just, you, we always said numbers are, are powerful, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know 73 is the number of wisdom? Mm. And 27 is the number of light. Mm. It says that they're far from the wisdom of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're far from the light of God. Mm -hmm. And he says they are whoring themselves by going after things in the world that God says, stop it. Now, listen, who are alienated from the life of God, mm -hmm. far from the law of God and subjecting some, excuse me, and subjection and obedience to unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. But those who love God walk in righteousness Walk in the love and the fear of God and worship him alone. Thank you, Lord. You know, something comes to all men, whether you're righteous and women, whether you're righteous or unrighteous. That means save or unsaved. We all must die. That's There's only two people in the Bible who never saw death, and that is who? Um, that is, you, come on, Enoch? Enoch. Enoch. And I couldn't think of his name. Elijah. Yet. Yes. They are the only two that God took. One represents the rapture and the other one rep represents the taking away of the righteous. Wow. Because God said, hey, you walk with me, even when you close your eyes, you're immediately in the presence of God. Oh, I want that. You know, I, I, made, a, I made a statement. <laughs> and Jeremiah's kind of continued with it, but I just want to go back to this go statement. Ahead. When we worship other gods, we are prostituting ourselves. Mm. We are committing adultery and idolatry. First Corinthians 6, 16. Do you know, do you not know that the one, the one joins himself to a prostitute. Is one with her. In one body with her. Wow. For the word says the two shall be one flesh. Wow. So you give in your strength to another. Oh, man. Whenever, you know, we're talking about a prostitute woman here, um, but we're, we're also talking about a system of pro and, a, and a spirit of prostitution wow. within that system. 
Okay, so we, we, we might say, well, I'm not, I'm not dealing with no prostitute. Why do they keep talking about that? Because there is a, there is a spirit of prostitution upon this land, even right now. Do you not? Are you not aware? Mm -hmm. And you're giving your strength to things that do not mean anything mm. that are meaningless void and listen samson was a, a perfect example <laughs> of that very thing he literally gave his strength to a prostitute oh my lord literally and although in the end he was on he he restored he regained some honor right god restored some honor in him because God is going to have merciful. his way. Yeah, he's merciful. Yeah, he's going to have his way. He'll use you no matter what. He's going to have his way. But why did Samson even have to go there? Yeah, man. Why do we even have to go there? Why do we have to go to that prostitute's door? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, why do we even need to go there so that God can get the honor? Come oh, on. Man. Oh, man. Yeah, uh, you know what? You know how you honor God by being obedient from the very beginning. Yeah, and you want to know something about him? Like we said, you know that you know Samson. I was you know told my wife. I said at the end of his life, he said one prayer mm -hmm. that God honored, brought him back on track at the mm -hmm. very last day of his life. Mm -hmm. He was being ridiculed in a stadium mm -hmm. full of thousands of Philistines, at least three thousand. And they put him, they said, bring him out, come on. Bring out the strong man. <laughs> Remember, by this time, he was binded, he was blinded, mm -hmm. and he was grinded. Mm -hmm. And so now he stands there and he says, God, give me strength just one more time. And he brought down the whole stadium mm -hmm. and he killed more in that one day than he did in his whole life. Wow. But, but understand, how can a prayer come like that? Because he looked as he was grinding that wheel. He was thinking about all that he did wrong. Mm. He was thinking about, look where I am now because I stepped into the door of a prostitute and I gave my strength to the wishes of a woman who was not following your ways. And I began not to follow your ways and he was cut short because of that. And why did that happen? Because God wasn't enough for him. It wasn't enough for him. God and wasn't that's enough that. for him. Yes, yes. He, he, he was no different than our children that are born and raised in the gospel today. Dedicated, we dedicate mm -hmm. them to him. Mm. They have a calling on their lives. Yet, when they get old enough, I'm missing something. Yeah. I, there's something missing. Uh, I don't have no fun. Yeah. Wasted lives. And you know what? Our children, let me tell you what our children are subjected to. We're training them in righteousness, but they have so much of the world in TV mm -hmm. and music that influence, influ it influences them. I like what Christopher Wisely uh, put on, you know, live right here on Facebook. He says, what we're talking about sounds like Romans 132. He says, we are guilty before God, even if we endorse sin. There you go. Though we do not partake in the sin, mm -hmm. may the Lord forgive us all. And I'm going to read that, mm. Christopher. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is Romans chapter 1 where Paul is dealing mm -hmm. with the false idols of Rome and all these people who gave their honor and worshiped these false images. And because of this, because of this, God gave them over to their own sin in their mm -hmm. mind. It's, mm -hmm. it's called it's called wow. uh, the... Um, uh, wow. The unqualified mind. Let me put it that way. Huh? Wow. That's what it talks about. God makes your mind. Now, well, well, let me just be careful about this because we're talking about God's children. But those who have worshipped idols, God gave them over to the passion of their own sins. And it tells us this. It says, because they did this, God has given them over to shameful passions, even the women perverted natural use of their sex mm. by unnatural acts and in the same way men give up natural sexual relations with women and burn with passion for each other. This is what the word of God says. They can censor us if they want, but I'm reading the word of God 
That's why I said, you want to take me to court? Go ahead. But you're not suing me. You're suing the, you're suing the one that said what I'm reading. He says, and they gave up their passions. He says, men do shameful things with each other. And as a result, they bring upon themselves the punishment they deserve mm -hmm. for their wrongdoing. Now, look what Christopher says here when he gives us Romans 132. They know that God's law says that people who live in this way deserve death. Yet, not only do they continue to do these very things, but they even approve of others uh, who do them. And let me tell you something. Uh, a long time ago when I read this, Brother Christopher, I, I, I was it was in a time, too, that um, there was a certain governor that was marching in a parade that did not honor God. Uh, and uh, they said, well, uh, he's, just, he's just supporting the people. I said, uh-uh. If you march with them, you are one of them. You lay with a prostitute, you are you, a prostitute. That's right. And you know what? God will hold them uh, guilty because they endorse the very sins that they are doing. Now listen, right. in, I've, even in churches, I've seen this with pastors and ministers. I have told, this is wrong. Yeah, but this is the way we've been doing it for a long time. I don't care how long you've been doing it. I told you the scriptures say this, and you move away from the scriptures, you're going to have to pay the price. See, perversity goes a long way. And so, think about this now. If we follow false gods and worship them, this is called spiritual adultery and fornication. The scriptures often speak of it, and it is intended by it, and it's intended by idolatry. Look with Deuteronomy, and we will close for now. 3116, I'll give my wife the last word here. The Lord said to Moses, you will soon die. And after your death, the people will become unfaithful to me hmm. and break the covenant wow. that I made with them. Wow. They will abandon me and worship the pagan gods of the land they are about to enter into. Wow. That you know, I have to cry. I cry at that. Wow. To imagine you working all your life to bring people to a place of righteousness and before you die he says, You're gonna die. You're going with me. But I wanna let you know the people that you've been teaching, the people that you've been instructing, wow. they're going to backslide. Wow. They're gonna go back to the world. They're wow. gonna enter into gates of pagan gods and they're gonna begin to mm. worship them. Mm. They're going to desire the things that the world wants and have. What, are, you know something? Mm. I wonder what the heart of Moses must have felt at that moment. Mm. You mean to tell me I was 40 years in Egypt <clears throat> thinking I was somebody. You took me out of Egypt and for 40 years I attended sheep to my father-in-law learning that I was no one, nobody. And then you brought me to Mount Sinai where I saw you in the burning bush and you took me to take out your people and for 40 years I've led them and now you're telling me that they're going to go back to Egypt? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is because Egypt never came out of them. Yes, amen. You could put a man or a woman in a new suit or dress. But, but, it, but, mm -hmm, but. It, but. <laughs> they don't get their butts out of their mm -hmm. situation. It never changes. Like they say, you can take a man or a pig out of the mud and put a brand new suit on him and clean him up, but they'll go back to the mud because that's what their natural yeah, that's, right. that's their natural habitat. Our natural habitat is should should not be the culture and the ways of our own life. It should be Christ. That's right. That's why we're here talking about hear the ancients because that's what we should be following. We should be following mm. the word of God. And so um with with that being said when you have a godly leader leading you and he is no longer around, do you go back to who you were or do you follow God who sees everything and knows everything? You know, you have something here that I just, if you could just read that little part here because it's so beautiful. Timothy? Yeah. Is a good example of someone who received excellent teaching in his childhood and honored it throughout ye the years. Until we meet again, shalom. shalom.